international on us flow country where we start plan to develop this year you want to respect the people of the elders for the people that are people chief for the people past present more of the future too um, we really want to tell people thank you all the people who allow me to come to visit the people of the people who allow me to visit the people of the people who allow me to visit the people of the people across Australia thank you um, once again um, uh, I'm very privileged to always come back to air and to the Vertican region, as you all know, and the High Commissioner of Vanuatu. And uh, I think when um, we, we keep saying that Vanuatu and Australia have established their diplomatic relationships 43 years ago, I think the message that I always put it back to the government in Canberra would be that our relationship started way, way before that. Mm. Uh, Vanuatu relationship in Australia started way, way, way before that. It started back in 1800s. And uh, the proof of the history is here, and it's a fact, it's not a lie, that we said that our history started in 1800 already, rather than 43 years ago. And yes, we might have established the diplomatic relationship between our two countries 43 years ago when Vanuatu exceeded independence, its independence in 1980, but our relationship, how we communicate people to people, started way, way back in 1800. And the proof is that we're all, all here today. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about Australian South Sea Islanders. So we've talked about our Aboriginal families. Uh, we've talked about our Australian, um, uh, sorry, the Torres Strait Islanders family as well. And we've talked about our Pacific families as well. And it is important to understand that Australia and the Pacific have a common history. And their history are intrinsic. And there's nothing on earth that can separate us uh, because uh, we're a family. And as they said in Fijian language, they say Vuvale partnership. And that Vuvale, actually, the term Vuvale means family. And that family, that family connections between us is very deep. And in, in no one can separate us. And uh, therefore, when I come to this country to undertake my job across the country, when I go to different parts of the country, I, lo I, I, I see people that look like me. And I also see people that have family names that resounds in my ears as well that tells me the history of the country, that tells me that these people uh, were also once upon a time taken from Vanuatu to here. And so this is a history that um, you and I have to keep alive, that history. You and I have to keep moving on into the future with that history. But as we move on to the, to the future with that particular history, let's not always forget that it's not easy to move forward with the history. Um, what I always say, uh, say in Canberra is, yes, we might have a dark past in our history, but what are we doing about it? What are we doing about it? Are we just going to sit and cry about it? Or are we going to say, let's turn this dark history into a positive thing. Let's try and make it a positive outcome. And yes, no country is perfect. No region is perfect. No continent is perfect. But the good thing that we think that will help us in moving forward is that we could always come together and work together. We could always come together and make sure that things work. But in order for us to come together and make things work, we need to start at the grassroots level. We can't all be sitting up here and thinking that we will fix the problem by being up here. And so that's why I make it a mission of mine to go across the country and to meet all of you and to hear from firsthand experience from you as well and to understand how you feel about you know your situations every day as being you know dual or tri-cultural background how do you perceive Vanuatu and if you have any questions about Vanuatu I will definitely be uh, happy to answer you on all these questions as well and if you think that you know um, you want to come and visit come and establish business opportunities and everything I will always be happy and my office will always be there to support you and to support whoever that wants to come and see us and stay with us for some time and come back here again uh, being Australian South Sea Islanders does not mean that we want to take um, your other culture away from you because we understand that when our people came to this country they they they, they can only um, uh, I would say they can only marry into the families that look like them they can only back in those days they can only um, start a new family in this country with people that look like them and so history is history we can't change the course of history but what we can do is that we can we can leverage on that. We can make it a better, a better, uh, a better future for all of us. And so that's why I think it's so important that we we continue to see um, we continue to see the repercussion of the history, but in in a positive way. But we continue to also see that we have built on these 
um, uh, momentum that we have in the history to make sure that today we're where we are today. And um, I gladly hear from our chief minister here that was saying that uh, you know our people are in this town once again coming back to, to this town to work. And uh, I think since you know uh, we've established the labor mobility agreement with Australia, they've been coming back and forth to Burdekin region especially to come and work here and to support not only the local economies but then to support also the businesses as well and at the same time supporting their families back home and also supporting our governments and so we thank you for always welcoming them um, in, in your beautiful uh, part of Australia. We thank you for looking after them, we thank you for coming out uh, and look after them when they're in needs because we're not always here so uh, we're really 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 grateful to all the communities across this country uh, to support our workers whenever they're in need and so Vanuatu will forever be grateful to you for lending a support, lending a hand to our workers that are here as well. Um, I just want to mention one thing that when we met the Minister for International Development in the Pacific, um, Minister Pat Condroy, what he was saying about labor mobility, he said labor mobility has four wins and it's not only one win but it has four wins. Uh, the first wing, the first win being for the for the family of the worker, that you know they work here and then they remit money back to their families back home, so that the, the family can be able to uh, to, to, to to continue you know uh, to providing the needs that they have to provide not only to their immediate families but also to the extended family. The second win is for uh, for uh, our country, Vanuatu because in terms of the remittance that they send back home, my government also gain in terms of that in terms of the tax that it gets out of the money they send to our countries. Um, the third win is the win for the farmer, because the farmer makes a profit when he has workers on the farm. And we all know during COVID, uh, when no workers came to Australia, especially backpackers, um, then what workers were heavily, you know, were the first one to travel back to Australia in October 2020 during the COVID, when Australia's borders were still locked to come to the mango industry, yeah? and mango industry in Darwin and in here as well. And so mango industry in Australia is somewhere around $400 million, uh, close to $400 to $600 million in one season alone. And so uh, this is the contribution where families do, uh, families tie. Uh, you know, it's, it's very strong. It's a very strong ties so that when we know that you are in need, the, our families in Australia are in need for the workers, we made it possible. We made it possible during COVID to make sure that the workers come from Vanuatu to come and sustain that particular industry that helps Australians every day, Australians living their lives, uh, putting food on their tables as well, making sure that your business thrive as well and all of that. So we make sure that family looks after each other. Uh, we may not have um, money to contribute to your living every day, but we contribute to your business. And the last win in that, in that regard would be the win for the local community where uh, they live in, meaning that they're the ones actually supporting the local communities. They're the ones that go to calls and buy food in calls. They're the ones that will go to uh, uh, to the shop next door to buy some warm clothes or to buy clothes to send back home to their families. So it's a it's a four win in labor mobility. It's not just one win. And so this is what the Minister of the International Development and Pacific, Pat Conroy, uh, Minister Pat Conroy, said about uh, the labor mobility. Now I understand that in this particular town. Um, our workers have a lot of issues as well. And um, uh, when we talked about something that is, such as labor mobility, obviously it does not only come with positivity, but it can also come with negativity because you are actually importing actually people to come here, human beings. Huh? These are not uh, commodities like I would say a particular product, coffee or coconut or something that you trade, but you trade actually human beings. You have human beings coming here. And whenever human beings are coming to a different parts of the world, wherever they go, there will always be some sort of tension, sometimes some sort of tensions in the community as well. And so I understood that in this particular town, we do have all these tensions as well, sometimes with the First Nation family, but also Australian South Sea Islanders family and Torres Strait Islanders family as well that we have here. And so we, 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 we are working together with the federal government to make sure that we address those issues. I think where we, we really lack we lack in terms of uh, our workers, especially in terms of knowledge about our local communities. I think where we lack is the fact that we don't have a cultural framework in place uh, in the program itself, in the labor mobility. So we didn't have a cultural framework in place and we still don't have a cultural framework in place for our workers. When they come to a town like this, then they understand the indigenous community in this particular town. So we are working on that. We are working on that in 2023. We are making sure that we will have to connect all the towns that 
our work as a Sentu, we will have to connect with the First Nation community in those towns and explaining to them actually the laws of the land where they are on. And so we are definitely working on that. And in that cultural framework as well, I have to thank uh, the Australian South Sea Islander Port Jackson, uh, King Councillor um, Davis, who's sitting with us today here, uh, of the work that they, they do to support us in terms of the cultural framework, because we've already started initially to do that as well with our workers and training them. Last year alone, we've run some, uh, some 50 to 60 hours of training online with our workers across the country to inform them about where they are in, across the country in terms of um, everyday living. For example, if they see a police officer, uh, in town, they should not be scared because let's not also forget that Vanuatu we came out of colonization not long ago. Uh, it was just 43 years that we came out of that situation where uh, uh, it's still fresh in our mind where people will see uh, uh, a white police officer in their village and they will be traumatized because usually in Vanuatu if you're in a village you may not see a police officer for the whole year or for two years in a row. In my village I couldn't remember the last time we saw a police officer coming but if one is coming to your village and especially in uniform, that means there's a trouble in the village. That means something is wrong. That means they'll come and arrest somebody. So for them, when they come to this country, they do not understand all this concept. And they hear stories from their parents, obviously, because we were just coming out of colonization 43 years ago where they said, if you see a white police officer, you should be prepared that they might arrest you or they might do this. So they still come in the village with this mentality. And you'd have also to understand that these workers that are coming to Australia, 80% of them come from rural Vanuatu. Rural Vanuatu were the places where I said they've never seen a police officer, and they've never seen an ambulance, and they've never seen this. So when they come here, it's like they're coming to New York. You know, they leave their village to come to New York. Even air is like New York to them. And so we need to understand this whole dynamics and concept of them coming from a place where they've never seen these things, where they wouldn't even have one street in their village and coming to here, which is completely different from them. And sometimes the fact that we notice when we run those trainings, we notice that the cultural component to understand the law of the land, the Aboriginal people, the Torres Strait Islander people, is not there. And we're keep, we keep pushing with the federal government to make sure that we have elders, yeah? Coming, coming and teaching them actually about the law of the land, uh, where they are, uh, what are the do's and the don'ts in the land itself. And so we hope that next year we will definitely uh, engage, uh, you know, with you, uh, Randall, <coughs> making sure that you know you you are aware of the programs that the federal government will put in place to educate those people, to educate them when they come to this land. Because then I go to different parts of Australia, and then they tell me, my workers are telling me, we see a lot of Africans living in that place here. Um, and I, I looked at them, and I would go with them, and I said, no, they're not Africans. These are First Nations, but they don't know these are First Nation people. But they wouldn't know that these are Aboriginal people because they were never told. Because again, like I said to Dave and uh, Belinda and the team this morning is, the Australia that we see in Vanuatu is white Australia. That's all we see there. So for them, coming from the rural area, they wouldn't ever expect to come here and see people that look like them in this country. And slowly this message is now going across the board. We make sure that we also include that in our pretty budget training, which I'm going to share with you soon, so you can consult with the community as well, so that this particular angle <coughs> on indigenous people has to be there as well, depending on which town they go to across Australia, it has to be there as well. But once again, I would like to thank you for all the support that you provide to them. I would also like to thank Dave, Dave and thank Belinda as well for your good, kind heart. Uh, for um, you know your interest, the interest that you pay as well in the issues and, and, and the issues that the community is faced in this, uh, in this particular part of the country as well. And once again, uh, I would like to thank everyone, especially you know coming out now, we just came here and I saw a lot of my workers are standing there at the bank and uh, I mm. asked uh, Randall, I said, why are they congregating there next to the bank? And uh, it, sometimes it's because they don't have Wi-Fi at home. And that's why they're there actually, to connect to the Wi-Fi from the bank. Mm. And, and it's a pretty sad story because these are the issues that we keep raising with the government in Canberra. We keep raising with the federal government. We said any lodgements, any accommodations that they're in, they must have the Wi-Fi. They must have the Wi-Fi because connection to their families back home is everything. Uh, for us, family is everything. And just like our communities here, family is everything. And so you cannot disconnect them from their families back home. Because if you disconnect them from their families back home, that's when problems start happening. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we, we now want to make it mandatory in 2023 that all accommodations that are housing seasonal workers under a labor mobility program must have a mean of communication so that they can communicate with their families back home. 
because in rural area of Australia, we know that communication can be expensive, and data sometimes in far north Queensland can cost up to seventy dollars weekly just for data, so that they can connect with their families back home. And when this connection is disrupted, that's when problems come in. That's when they will go and drown themselves into alcohol because they wouldn't be able to speak to their wives, for example, for our men, or they wouldn't be able to speak to their husbands for our female workers. And so that's when the problem will start happening, actually, and then they will go and run wild. And the other thing that I was also saying today was that because they came here, and alcohol is so cheap here as well, and it doesn't mean that they should go drinking alcohol, but because it's cheaper than what they're used to back home, because back home we have lots of tax on alcohol, so they may not be able to run wild with alcohol like that. But when they come here, alcohol is pretty cheap here in Australia. And so they keep drinking to drown themselves in there because they think that by drinking alcohol, their worries will go away. But if we start tackling the, the root core of the problems as to why they're drinking alcohol, then we will definitely solve the problem. But once again, today I'm here. I'm hearing a lot of discussions we had this morning about the issues that we have here as well. And I would like to say that um, uh, we, will, we will be ready to, to, to talk to whoever we have to talk to in Canberra to make sure that the issue is addressed because we know that our people are also contributing to the economic well-being of, of this particular town in terms of the work that they do here to support um, the local town. And obviously, I'm sure that the council gets also some uh, some some financial means out of that as well. Mm -hmm. Once again, I thank you all. Yeah. Thank you. Bye,